This video is going to put into practice all of the previous videos that we've talked about introduction to probabilities and conditional probability. This would be a video that would be best watched after completing this worksheet. If you don't happen to have the worksheet in front of you, it might be good to take a pause after I introduce each problem so you can try it yourself. The best part about learning probabilities and statistics is putting your pen or pencil to paper and trying it before I reveal the answer. Videos before this one were called Introduction to Probabilities 1 and 2 and also Conditional Probabilities in my video series. So let's begin. We have a sample space of 20 ping pong balls starting at 1 and ending at 20. So the ping pong balls go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. We're going to let the set A be all of the even numbers and set B all the numbers that are greater than 13. Now, the first thing we're going to do before you even attempt problem number 7 is I'd like to draw a picture of the sample space. It's much easier to see what we're talking about with a picture. So pause the video, draw a picture, and then unpause it to see what the answer is. So, the first thing I'm going to do for my sample space is I'm just going to draw a nebulous blob and that's going to represent S. That is my sample space. Sometimes people put the S inside or outside. This letter S is to denote that this is the entire sample space of our 20 ping pong balls. Then we're going to have sample A or set A, excuse me, and set B. Now the reason why they're interlocking is it's possible for one ping pong ball to actually be part of both sets. So this would be the intersection of A and B. Now something that's in set S and is not in set A or B would just be outside of these two interlocking circles. So the best way to draw this is to go methodically from the numbers 1 through 20, noting that set A are all the even numbers and set B are all the numbers greater than 13. So what you might want to do is you might want to indicate that this is the even set and then this B is greater than 13. So let's continue, let's start with one. Now the ping pong ball one is not even nor greater than 13, so it's outside here in sample space S. Two is an even number but not greater than 13, so it goes here. 3 is not even nor greater than 13. 4 is even, but not greater than 13. 5 is not even, nor greater than 13. 6 is even, but not greater than 13. 7, not even, not greater than 13. 8 is even, but not greater than 13. 9, not even, not greater than 13. 10 is even, but not greater than 13. 11, not even, not greater than 13. 12 is even, but not greater than 13. Now let's talk about 13. 13 is not greater than 13. If this was greater than or equal to, then I would put this inside of set B. Another way to say this is that let B be the numbers that are greater than or equal to 14, since we don't have any um, non-whole numbers here. But now I'm going to get to 14. 14 is even and greater than 13, so it goes in the intersection. 14 belongs in set A and set B. 15 is odd, but greater than 13, so I almost made a mistake of putting it on the outside here. 15 belongs in set B, because it is a number that is greater than 13, but it happens to be odd, so it does not belong in this even set. 16 goes here, because it is even and greater than 13. 17 is greater than 13, but not even. 18 goes here because it's even and greater than 13. 19 is greater than 13, but not even. And finally, 20. Now what's great about this picture is that we can complete the set S, the set A, and the set B. So what you might want to do is pause the video and complete problems 7, 8, and 9. Set S is the entire set of the numbers 1 through 20. Notice how I made my set symbols here. 
You can find these on any computer keyboard above the brackets. And I'm just going to continue here, just I might because I might run out of space. And there we go. There's my set S, which consists of 20 elements, all the numbers 1 through 20, including 1 and 20. Set A is all the even numbers. So this is just 2, 4, 6, and so on and so forth, until we get to 20. Now set B are all the numbers greater than 13. It does not include 13 because this says greater than 13 and not greater than or equal to 13. Although the set B could have been written as greater than or equal to 14 since we don't have any non-whole numbers. All right. So what we can do now, since we have the set A, set B, and set S, we can find the probabilities of A and B. You may want to keep your picture up above inside of your vision. Pause the video and try to do problems 10 and 11. So the probability of A deals with how much we want over what our total possibilities are. And in probability of part A, that sample size is 10. There are 10 elements in, the, in A. And there are 20 elements in the entire uh, set S, so we have a 50% chance, or 0.5 as a decimal. We can add a zero to be stylistic to show that that's 50% chance of pulling an even number. Now there are fewer elements in B. You can see that there are seven, and seven out of 20 gives you 0.35, which is 35%. Okay, so what I want you to do for problems 12 and 13 is I want you to write down just the elements that are in A and B. And then in problem 13, I want you to write down just the elements that are in A or B. Notice that um, the probabilities are going to be taking these numbers that we find in 12 and 13. Another alternative notation to and would be this A and B, and this would be A or B, and that symbol there is the union symbol, and this symbol here is the intersection symbol. So pause the video and try 12 and 13. So the answer for number 12 is going to be the intersection of those two, which is 14, 16, 18, and 20. Because these were the numbers that were both even and greater than 13. They satisfy both conditions. Now the A or B set is much larger. And it's much larger because it has to satisfy either condition, but not both conditions at the same time. So here you have an even number, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, right? And 12. These are even numbers. And then we get to 14 because it's an even number and it's greater than 13. And then you have all the numbers that are greater than 13, but not necessarily even. But of course the even numbers are included as well because it just has to have one of those two traits. Kind of like saying, I'm looking for someone who plays the part who is tall and has black hair. I mean, um, that would be an and situation where both would have to be true. But what if you say I'm looking for someone to play this part who is tall or has black hair? Then it can be someone who's tall or has black hair and not necessarily matching both criteria. Whereas here, this would be both criteria at the same time. So, I want you to pause the video and now that we know how many elements are in these two sets, figure out what is your um, probability of pulling something that fits A and B or something that fits A or B. 
So we can see from problem 12 that there are four elements in this set and there are 20 elements in set S. So your chances of pulling something that matches both criteri criteria is 4 out of 20 or 0.2 or 20% to be stylistic because that's a 20% chance. Now you can see there's a lot of elements in this A or B because you can either have A true or B true. And so are 13 of these. And 13 out of 20 gives me 0.65 or 65% chance of that happening. Okay, so in problem 16, I want you to find A prime, which is the short way of saying, I want you to find the complement of A. Now complement was talked about in the earlier video, so you may want to go look that up. So list all the elements in problem number 16. You pause the video, please do that, and then unpause the video. So the complement of A is another way of saying not A. So not A would be the set of all odd numbers. Now obviously you probably didn't need to write this down, but as you see me list the numbers 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, 13, 15, 17, and 19, it's pretty evident that the complement of evens are odds. And therefore, the probability of a prime would be the number of elements out of set S. But I'd like you to maybe do problem 17 and 18 together. Problem 17 and 18 would be best done together because they, they are connected in a way. So please go pause the video, try 17 and 18, and unpause it and see what you find. What you find in problem number 17 is that what we have is we have 10 elements in A prime and 20 elements in S, which gives us a 0.5 or 50% if we wanted to write that stylistically, and that gives us our percentage pretty easily. Now, the probability of A that we found out earlier, if you look back at problem 10, was 0.5. And the probability of A prime that we just found in number 17 is 0.5. So that means that these two probabilities add up to be 1, or 100%. And this brings in the true statement that an event plus its complement equals 100% probability. So the probability of an event and its complement is 100% probability, or an event and its complement is 100% of the outcomes. Okay, so the biggest check that we need to do here is we need to make sure that you can do your conditional probability. Now, I will explain this, so you may want to pause the video if you want to jump in right now. But what probability means is, again, here's a little spoiler, is for problem 19, I want to know what are your chances of picking um, something from group A having already chose from group B. And problem number 20 is the flip of the situation. Let's say you just pick everything in circle A. Well, what are the chances of uh, you having you know, to pick something that also happens to be in circle B? Okay, so pause the video, let's give this a try. Okay, so you're ready to see the answer for problem numbers 19 and 20. The method I like to use is I like to think of the A in the numerator and the B in the denominator. So I'm going to list all the elements of B in the denominator. So 14, 15, oops, I shouldn't need a comma there, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. Okay, so get rid of that comma. Okay, so now that is my denominator of my answer. My answer is going to have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 elements in it. Now, the numerator is going to be elements in A having already chosen elements in B. So I'm going to list all my elements in A. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, and 20. Oops, again, don't need the comma. 
All right, so let's highlight the duplications. It's one, two, three, and four. So I have four duplications. So therefore, my numerator is four. Now you can follow this algorithm to do conditional profit, uh, conditional probability perfectly. A bigger brain way to think of it is if you have just set B, count how many elements in set A are also in set B, which is why they get highlighted. Four sevenths is one divided 0 0.571, which is 57.1%. Now we'll do the probability of B chose A the same way. Now let's make my A part of the denominator. So this would be all the even numbers. So there are 10 of them. That is my denominator. That's what it's going to be. Now my numerator is going to be elements of B that happen to match A. So here's my elements of B, all the numbers greater than 13. And I'm gonna get my highlighter and I'm gonna match up where they match. See there's, they match here, oh I gotta match here. And this one kinda goes over here. So we have four matches. So my numerator is again four. And four tenths is 0.4 or 40%. Now, if you found yourself watching this video all the way through without practicing, or if you found yourself doing this worksheet and then having to change every single answer because you were wrong during the worksheet, you may wanna get another copy of the worksheet and practice this six to six to eight hours later. I promise you, thanks to um, you know, short-term memory and stuff that this will feel brand new. And you may wanna do this maybe, you know, until you get it perfectly before trying some of the online homework. All right, well, I appreciate you sticking through chapter three, section one. This has a, been a pretty dense unit, but it's the introduction to probabilities with conditional probabilities thrown in. Thank you for watching.